Silver in the 1500, if you me. Bronze at the 1000 at the World Championships. And there's Hamlin. Next to him is skating two. for Italy, Italy wearing helmet number 139, a 20-year-old, skating in his first World Cup final in this Bellotti. From the United States, from the United States Jordan Malone, a 22-year-old from the all places, Long Beach, California, skated relays at the World Championships in 2005, 2006. Korea. And from oh, Korea, Ho so yeah. Suk Lee wearing helmet number 150, number five, Olympic silver in the 1,000 meters, China, silver in the same Yu distance Yang. at the World Championships. And wearing helmet number 182 from China, Zhao Ling Lu. It is nine laps around the Maurice Richard Arena here in Montreal. This is the final of the men's 1,000. Ready? The 1,000 is sometimes considered the thinking man's race. It's a sprint, and yet you really have to conserve a little bit of energy. Charles Hamlin in a tough final here, and I would say the biggest competition comes from Ho Suk Lee, who is trying to make a move on the Chinese skater. Ho Suk Lee is considered little on, always in the shadow of his teammate, Hyun Su On, who won this event in, in turn at the Olympics. Right now it is Charles Hamlin in front, and sometimes in short track speed skating, as we've seen, that is the safest place to be. You're out of harm's way, but he can feel the pressure now as Hosek Lee and Jialing Lu of China apply a little bit of pressure. Hamlin being in front puts himself in control. The coaches will be yelling at him, telling them that the other skaters are trying to make a move, and Hosek Lee goes down. Hamlin hears that, so he increases the pace, and the man to beat Hosek Lee has gone down. Hamlin has really extended the gap over the rest of the skaters. And in second place is Jordan Malone of the United States. In the absence of Apollo Anton Ono, he is the strongest individual skater representing the United States. Run the bell lap. Less than a lap to go now. The men's 1,000 meter final. And Charles Hamlin is going to win gold. Jordan Malone of the U.S. takes the silver, and Dennis Bawati of Italy takes the bronze. Hosuk Lee, the Olympic silver medalist in the 1,000 meters, fell in this 1,000 final here in Montreal. The gold going to Charles Hamlin. What a way to perform in front of a hometown crowd. Charles Hamlin skating a very smart race, getting out in front. And we've talked so many times, Steve, in short track speed skating, when you're out front, you're out of trouble. And Charles Hamlin stayed away from Ho Suk Lee. Hamlin really dominated this race from the beginning. He didn't want to start too quickly to waste too much energy. He looks around him, knows that everybody is with him, but Ho Suk Lee caught his skate on his other foot. There was no impeding with another skater, and he just, you see something that you don't see very often with the Korean skater going down all by himself, but Hamlin's skating a very smart race. As soon as you hear somebody go down, you take off, you increase that distance, and what a great race for Charles Hamlin in this final. Silver in the 1500 meters in Shikudami, and he turned silver into gold with a victory in the 1000 here in Montreal. Had a simple but obviously very successful strategy. The Edmonton Oilers. We're getting set for the first semifinal of the women's 500. Top two will advance to the final. It's four and a half laps, and this one features Canada. Kalina Canada. Robert. Robert. Canada, number 11. And she'll be skating with Ji Su Jun of Korea, Zhao Lai Cheng of China, Ray. and Ariana Fontana of Italy. Robert has really burst onto the circuit and done well with the pressure that has been put on her because she has the experience from the junior level, but at the senior level now she's skating extremely well. A good start staying right behind the Korean skater, Jun, and knowing that the top two qualify, she needs to make sure she stays on her feet. And if she wants to make a move, it's going to be in this last lap. 
and in the 500, because it's only four and a half laps, you can ill afford to make a mistake. Robert is trying the outside. She gets by the Korean. A very good move. Executed perfectly by Kalina Roberge of Canada. Has her in front in this first of two semifinals in the women's 500. Roberge wins it. Zhao Lai Cheng of China taking second place. So Cheng and Roberge will move on and skate for the medals in the women's 500. What a great move from Kalina Roberge. It was a great move and it was a gutsy move as well. She was sitting in second place, but she wasn't satisfied with that. She said, I want to win this semifinal at home. And so she made the move. The toughest thing about some of these passes is as soon as you get bumped a little bit, you can sometimes get rid of a lot of your speed. Roberge continued to fight on the outside. She kept the speed, she kept going, and she dominated this race. And this will give her a lot of confidence going into the final. And this might be the advice of the new technical advisor from Korea, Mr. Chun, who has uh, been brought on board to assist uh, Derek Campbell and Martin Gagné in coaching the Canadian athletes. And Kalina Roberts may be the recipient of some of that uh, coaching advice. She wins this first semifinal of the women's 500 and advances along with China's Chang. Set now for the second semifinal of the women's 500. And this one involves the Canadian rookie, Jessica Gregg. There she is, one of bronze in Shikunami, in one of two 500s skated there. She is in with Tian Yu Fu of China, Min Jie Kim of Korea. Erica Hazar of Hungary. Jessica Gregg skating well, really being aggressive at the start there against the veteran Tian Yu Fu. And that is impressive because as a young athlete in short track, you can sometimes back away at the start. Jessica Gregg showing a lot of potential, but knowing that the Chinese can be very strong. And Fu trying to take an outside pass around Gregg, who looks a little cautious on some of these corners. Fu has taken over the lead. She was second in the 500 on the World Cup Tour in China. Was a member of the Chinese relay team that DQ'd in turn. The experience of Fu of China has her in front as she comes around the turn, heads for the finish line in the second semifinal of the women's 500. Fu wins it. Kim of Korea is second. And Jessica Gregg of Canada winds up third and will not qualify for the final in the women's 500. Canada will have one lone skater in that final, and that will be Kalina Robert. Fu skating a strong race, showing her experience, 28 years of age. But Jessica Gregg showing her potential here at the start, bumping with Tian Yu Fu from China, but continuing to go hard. But she just looked a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit tentative on the corners, not able to stay up with Fu. And Kim from Korea making a move on Gregg, moving into second place, and Gregg not hanging on ending up in third and will not qualify for the 500 final. Fu wins it. Min Jing Kim of Korea is... That's Charles Brady. Hamlin in helmet number 113. This time it's a good start and as expected the Canadians are skating one, two, three. Francois Louis Tremblay with an excellent start there. Again, each of these Canadians knows the strength of the teammate. They want to make a move. They want to win in this hometown arena in front of the hometown crowd. And Charles Hamlin now trying to make an inside move over Tremblay. Tremblay trying to stay up with him. And Hamlin goes down all by himself. He goes down. So Tremblay leading and Olivier Jean right behind him. Hamlin may have had too much speed and a mistake there by Francois Louis Tremblay. Olivier Jean taking advantage of it and taking the lead. Olivier Jean winning the men's 500 here in Montreal. Second place to Francois Louis Tremblay in a bronze medal to Tyson Hung of Germany. Charles Hamlin falling in this one, taking himself out of the race. An excellent start by the Canadians in this 500 meter final. Charles Hamlin then making an inside pass, taking an extra long stride 
trying to stay ahead of Francois Louis Tremblay and sliding hard into the bumpers. We'll Francois Louis Tremblay then being passed by Olivier Jean and struggling to keep up with him. He's not looking as comfortable as I've seen him, but Olivier Jean with his first victory. Jean was silver in the 500 in Chicoutimi and he turned silver into gold. The Canadians could easily have coasted to a 1 2 3 finish, but this is a very competitive laps. This is the final of the women's 500. Kalina Roberge, the lone Canadian, skating against two Chinese and one Korean. Ready? Roberge with a clean start, taking advantage of that inside position and really battling against the Chinese skaters. But Fu showing how strong she is by getting out in front. Roberge knows that in this short race, she needs to look for any opening and take advantage of that. It is Fu leading the way. Roberge nicely tucked in second position. Kim is third, and then it's Cheng, the second Chinese skater in this field, in fourth position. It looks as if Roberge is just waiting for the moment to make the right move, and that moment is now. It is Roberge in front of Fu. What a great move by Kalina Roberge, and Roberge wins the women's 500 with a daring move on the last lap against Tian Yu Fu of China. Roberge was patient. Two laps to go, and she looked like she had enough energy to make a move, but waiting for that opening. And that's part of short track speed skating. It's being aware of your surroundings, being patient. And Robert skated that type of race. It was a strategic race. She made the move on the last lap. It was an excellent move. She carried her speed. She had a good start, but Tianyu Fu showing how strong she is at the beginning. Robert's not letting anybody go and just looking for that opening and seeing it, taking advantage of the opening on the inside and holding on to the lead. Showing her strength, Robert bumping into Tianyu Fu, but not letting that stop her. Fu trying to move in front of her, but Robert really showed her dominance right now, how strong and how well she's skating. And that move by Fu has DQ'd her, so Robert wins it. Kim is second and Cheng is third. Just to reiterate some of the things that Katrina talked about, 16 skaters on the ice, four teams. Oh, Each skater will skate about a lap and a half, two laps. Ready. And then leave the race with a push off. Look for the Koreans to take an early lead here and try and hold off what will be a challenge from the Canadians. Korea, the United States, Canada, and Germany. Well, the Canadians have something to prove. At the last World Cup in Shikudumi, they were disqualified, and so they would love to give this hometown crowd a strong performance. It looks like mass confusion out on the ice, but every skater has a duty. And as you see the skater come out for the push-off, they have to monitor where their teammate is. The skater in front moves to the outside, the one in second moves next to them, and so that there isn't a, a real crash when you do the push-off. The push-off is very important. You are giving your speed to that other skater, and then you monitor them. If a skater falls, you can tag that skater. As you mentioned, Steve, skaters usually do a lap, a lap and a half, two laps. It's up to each team to decide what they want to do, how many laps they want to skate at a time. And right now, at this point in the men's 5,000 meter relay final, it is Korea and the United States uh, skating 1-2, Canada in third position, and the Germans currently in fourth. What the Canadians cannot afford to do is lose touch with the Koreans currently in front, and there's a move that has put the Canadians into second place ahead of the U.S. The Koreans are the team to beat, but the Canadians always are very strong in the relay. The Americans lacking the depth, especially without Apollo Anton Ono, who has decided to take the year off and see where he wants to be in this sport. The Koreans and the Canadians are putting a bit of gap over the Americans and the Germans. 
Paulo Antonio did some inline skating uh, this summer. He's back on skates now. He is looking perhaps at the World Championships in Milan. It'll be nice to have Apollo Anton Ono back in action. The U.S. certainly missing him. Right now in this relay final for the men, it's the Koreans in front, followed by the Canadians, then the Americans, and the Germans in fourth place. The Hansu on just passing off to his teammate, and we haven't seen a lot of on. He is one of the best skaters, if not the best skater in the entire world. The ISU, the International Skating Union, making a new rule that at World Cup, skaters can only skate two distances. So that is really restricting some skaters like On, who is strong in every distance. They have to choose which distances they want to do at each World Cup. Right now, it's Francois Louis Tremblay about to take himself out of the race with a push off. It's still the Koreans in front, followed by Canada, then the United States and Germany. Olivier Jean looking very comfortable and looking like he's enjoying himself. He must be with a gold medal finish here at Montreal, but every time we see him, he is smiling and looking like he's having fun and a wonderful move by the Canadians there to put themselves in the lead. And that was on who just got past. But don't count the Koreans out yet. There's a lot of racing to go as Monette is on the ice for the Canadians, and they have the lead. Here's a critical push-off. Still the Canadians staying in front, followed by the Koreans, then the Americans. 22 laps to go. Not that many laps to go, but we still see the speed increasing. It's a 45-lap race, but again, four skaters per team. François-Louis Tremblay passing off to Olivier Jean, who again looks comfortable, but the Koreans right behind them, and a real battle going on now. The Koreans overtaking Olivier Jean. And just like that, the lead changes, and it changes again. This time, the Canadians slide in front ahead of the Koreans. 19 laps to go. This is turning into a very entertaining race. Charles Hamlet pushing off here with 18 laps to go. Well, there we see the importance of the push-off. You want to give all of your strength and your speed to the next skater with each push-off changing the lead. The Canadians know how strong the Koreans can be and they just want to keep that lead. The speed is increasing at every lap, only 16 laps to go. That is Francois Louis Tremblay on the ice for Canada right now. And where you make that push off is oftentimes critical. If you make it in the middle of traffic in that neutral zone, it can create a lot of havoc. Jean skating very well, and the Koreans right behind the Canadians. Very tough competition here in this final. Less than 13 laps to go in this men's relay final. Stay with us. What should be an exciting finish ahead. Welcome back to Montreal and our World Cup coverage. This is the final of the men's 5,000 meter relay. And from the start, this has been a battle between the Canadians currently in front and the Koreans sitting in second place. Right now, the U.S. are in third and the Germans in fourth. Francois Louis Tremblay passing off to Olivier Jean, but the Koreans are right there with him. It is a two team race right now, and every push off is critical. Only eight laps to go in this 45 lap men's relay final. Canadians with a bit of a lead, and this might be the widest margin they've had so far, but never, I repeat, never count out the Koreans. They can close that gap so quickly, and they've done that here. A stumble by Monette, and that may cost the Canadians. That was a poor push-off, and then Monette could, just couldn't get his balance, and the Koreans taking advantage of that. A little bit of a gap over the Canadians. Can the Canadians make it up in these last few laps? The slightest mistake at this speed, at this level, can be very, very costly. The Koreans in front, less than four laps to go. You hear the gun, that means there's only going to be one more exchange from here. Olivier Jean trying to catch up on the Koreans, narrowing the gap a little bit, only two laps to go. You've got to think that the Canadians are hoping for some kind of major mistake on the part of the Koreans, and it won't happen from Hyun Soo on. He is on for the last lap for the Koreans. He checks over his right shoulder, makes that turn to the lines, 
the Koreans have won it. They take the goals. Canada is second in this one. This was a very good, a very competitive men's relay final. The Canadians this year won gold, won silver. They were DQ'd in Saguenay, so they had something to prove here in Montreal. And Katrina, I think they'll take this result. It was a strong performance by the Canadians, back and forth with the strong Korean team. Every exchange is so important, and that is where the Canadians struggled a little bit near the end of the race. Monette not able to take that speed, struggled and slipped, and the Koreans took advantage of that. Olivier Jean skating very well just before the last exchange, but the Koreans are always strong. They're fast, they're fit. Charles Hamlin putting in a good performance, but the Koreans just showing their strength.